Hey, homeschool friends, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to day two of curriculum week, where I'm going to be talking all about my curriculum choices for my fourth grader for the 2023, 2024 school year. I'm so excited to share them all with you. So yesterday I did film our family subjects. So I will link that above, go check that out. That's where you'll see the rest of his curriculum. But today we're just talking about his individual subjects. So mostly like math and language arts. And for some reference, he will be nine and a half when we start school. And I think we're gonna plan on starting like end of July, early August this year. So that's the basics. So let's just hop into all my curriculum choices. So hi, my name is Angie. Welcome or welcome back to the channel. Like I said, today is fourth grade curriculum choices. But before we hop into all of that, I wanted to say a quick thanks to Sunlight for sending me some of this curriculum, which I will be sharing with you today. They sent it in exchange for my honest review, which you will be getting throughout the year as we use the curriculum. I usually update in our monthly updates and I'll have some special kind of flip throughs and stuff as well. But let's just start talking all things fourth grade. So usually I would say my favorite subjects are family subjects. and. They probably still are, but you guys, I'm really excited for what I have planned for my fourth grader. Yes, he is kind of my guinea pig kid. He's my firstborn and I tend to switch things the most with him, but the lineup I have here on my table that I can see, it's just really exciting. And so I think it's gonna be a really good year for him. So let's just start. Let's start with some language arts because that's kind of the bigger subject that we're gonna be talking about today. So my plan for this year is kind of twofold. I am using both Sunlight Language Arts as well as Logic of English, which there's been a lot of questions on my channel about how I'm doing that, so I'll explain it right now. So let me just start with my plan for Sunlight Language Arts, because for my son, we started this level, level three, this past January, and Sunlight has it rated for ages seven to nine. So it's perfect, he's well within that range, and we're gonna finish the second part of this program this fall. I love level three because of the diamond notes, which are a unique way of teaching paragraph formation. And it really landed with my son because that was a lot of what we learned those first couple weeks when we started this. And now we've just been practicing it over and over and writing different types of paragraphs and things like that. But I've digressed. Let me tell you exactly what I use Sunlight Language Arts for. I use Sunlight for two main important things, the readers, as well as the creative expression or the composition. So for instance, here are the readers that he has left for level three. So he has a number of different exciting readers. I do have a full flip through of level three that I will link above that you can go and I go through more of the books, but like you can see here, just a few of them. That's his plan for the fall are these books. I do also pick up the extra five day readers. We use the four day language arts program but I like to have the extra readers. He might read some of these this summer. There's some more of the third grade detectives, just some cute books. They're perfect, small, early chapter book type readers. But then I do have level four. So I did pick up level four to start in January. And when we start, I'll do a whole flip through. But there are some really cool readers and they're bigger. They've definitely gotten thicker. And he's really excited for some of these. Like for instance, I'll show you the ones he's kind of most excited about, like this book. So that's the Escape from Mr. Lemoncello's Library he's really excited about. He's excited about some of these ones. So the Toothpaste Millionaire, it sounds really good to him, as well as these ones, some Beverly Cleary, and I love the new editions. And the Noisy Village, because we just read this in HBLB. It was one of the read alouds, but this is now a reader for level four. So he's excited about that because he likes those characters. Here's just some other books, Whipping Boy, kind of a classic. And then I did additionally pick up the five day extra readers. So he has like Ginger Pie, which I've heard a lot about, but I've never read. So we have so many readers. That is his plan, all of that this year. Now, I also said that I do use the creative expression. So I brought, here's level four. Here's the grid. I have done a lot of flip throughs and when I do level four, I will show you that. But what is included in the language arts for sunlight is everything needed. You have spelling, the extra phonics workbook, handwriting, 
vocabulary, and then it gets into the readers. Like I said, we use the readers, and then it gets into what's called the creative expression, and that's the other line we use. So we only use these two lines, and what I'm gonna talk about next for Logic of English is what covers all the rest up here. So for me, I'm not overlapping or teaching spelling from two different programs. I'm just picking which program I'm teaching certain subjects from, if that makes sense. So that's how I'm teaching two different programs. But let me talk about the creative expression because that is a big part of what I love about the language arts for Sunlight is I love, one, I said the diamond notes, so how they teach the paragraph formation. I love how the composition is taught in general. It's taught in a very spiral fashion and it's kind of small bits and pieces. So for instance, like in level three, you'll do a reflection paragraph. In level four, you'll also do a reflection paragraph, but it's just a little bit more in depth, or they're asking for a few more things because the students have learned a bit from here to here, and it just builds in a gradual fashion. And then there is a day on the Creative Expression Week that's called Copywork Application, and that's considered more of it's like grammar or sentence structure, punctuation, topics such as that that Sunlight will teach. And I will occasionally use that. I like to look at it because I like when they really take some of those concepts and makes it very applicable to the writing. And if they do that, then I will use the copywork application because like I said, my main focus is the writing. There is also the copywork, which I always have my kids do. It's good practice. And it also gets them ready for dictation, which happens in the later levels of Sunlight Language Arts. So that's what I mainly use the Sunlight for. And so my son is doing both level three and level four. And really my big goal is to get him through at least level three before we start HBL D and language arts D because that's when the history and the readers start to combine and I'm just so excited about that but I want them to be at a good level so that he can do that so that's really my main goal and as of right now we are definitely on target to do that so let me switch to logic of English what I use logic of English for is I use it primarily I actually switched primarily for the spelling and you can go see this video where I talk about why I chose the Logic of English Essentials program. But it was first and foremost spelling. My oldest is a struggling speller and so we really needed a lot of help with that. But it also teaches vocabulary and grammar and what I love about it, which I'm only holding up the student guide and the teacher's guide for that as well as what's called a spelling journal. But what I love about this program as a whole, which I did also do a big detailed flip through, is I love that it's all very interwoven together. So what you're learning within your phonics is applicable to spelling, is applicable to grammar and vocabulary. So it's all kind of intermixed and it makes it, I feel like, more robust. And my son really needed structure in these areas of language arts. He wasn't doing well under that very loose, natural approach, which I feel like some kids would do amazing with. He just it didn't quite work and so we are using logic of English in place of all of these subjects up here and it just, it works out. It works out for my family and the two programs really do complement each other in the ways I'm using them. And then I also do have the option of potentially using the logic of English online program. I'm not signed up for it yet because I have all the resources and if you saw that flip through, there's a lot of resources for this program. I don't mind that, I like flashcards. But if say for instance, I'm just a little overwhelmed by all the other teacher intensive programs I have to do, say with like my kindergartners or my third grader, then I might consider switching him to the online program. But so far I'm planning on teaching it to him myself. So those are kind of his big blocks of language arts, but I do have some other subjects, the small independent language arts subjects that I want to cover as well. So just working off the top, that being typing. So we've used the good and the beautiful typing. I have a flip through on this program. We really like it. You just use Microsoft Office and he just types and he's getting better at it. And he's really excited about learning to type better because of spell check. So that's one reason he is prioritizing that. The next thing I do have is handwriting. So I'm going a little different direction on handwriting. So I'm a big Danelian fan. We always have been. So this is his grade three book, which we're about halfway through. So I'm gonna have him finish Danielian grade three. But then I picked up Handwriting Without Tears. Why did I do that, you might ask? I did it because I was picking out an all subjects package with sunlight for my son. And you'll see some other stuff that goes with that. 
and they didn't have Danelian, but they have the Curse of Success with Handwriting Without Tears. I don't really know how to use Handwriting Without Tears. I feel like it should be pretty self-explanatory. I'm hoping it is, and so this is the book, and then there's some extra paper that I was sent as well, so we'll give it a go. If anything, I could just always pick up grade four Danelian if the handwriting without tears doesn't work, but I just feel like handwriting is handwriting. It doesn't have to be too complicated, and I'm hoping that's true, and that's the case. And then I have some other things here that have more to do with like testing and standardized testing, which are required in my state. I try not to make too big of a deal of it, but I also want to set up my kids well. And so I've used these reading comprehension sheets from Sunlight in the past, and we like them. And this, I picked up level three for him just because I feel like Abeka is really ahead. And so it works for his level. And so we're gonna keep doing these as more independent work for him. If they're causing a lot of stress or making him feel like he can't do it, we'll pause for a while and pick them back up. But I just like to expose them to this. Now, do I feel like my kids aren't getting enough like reading comprehension with the other programs we use? Of course not. We use Sunlight, which is all like lit-based and discussion-based. So we're constantly talking about what we're reading, but I just like this is just another form of like he's reading it and answering questions. And it's just kind of a skill, to be honest. It's not necessarily my favorite way to teach that stuff. I do prefer the discussion-based way of teaching that, but the reality is he has to take standardized testing. And so I also do pick up this test prep grade four I won't use this until the very end of the year, probably next May, but we'll just take a couple weeks. We'll go through some of these problems and just familiarize them with how it works and what kinds of questions they might see on the standardized test, mostly just to make them comfortable, not to like prep them or worry about like their score or anything like that. It's mostly just so that I know the results I get from the standardized tests are really his understanding as opposed to the fact that he just doesn't know how to take those tests. So I do pick up those kinds of resources as well. And then let's see, the other resource I have is more kind of not independent language arts, but it's just an independent work we do, which is Mind Benders through the Critical Thinking Company. Now this is grade three through six. We started this this past year. It was a little too hard, so we shelved it. So it's on my stack. I don't know if we're gonna start it in the fall or maybe hold on to it till January. But we love these little mind bender puzzles and when he's ready for them, it'll just be more fun. So that's kind of independent work, which leaves me with math. All right, so for math, we are continuing with Saxon. So Saxon 5.4 is what I have here. I was sent the kit through my all subject package with sunlight again, and it's fantastic. So it comes with the die of CDs, which I'll touch upon in just a second, as well, has all this other stuff so text and workbooks solutions manual and then just the textbook which is not consumable that's my understanding these these are not consumable so i can use these with my other kids as they need it so this officially jumps us into the more independent saxon work and it makes me a little nervous but i think he'll do great and i am actually planning on using one of the online programs so either nicole the math lady or my math assistant is i think the other one that a lot of you recommended to me i'll probably do their free trial sometime in the summer when we're starting our school out and i'll make a video comparing that because i haven't decided yet what i want but i knew that this would be a good place that i could move my son, my fourth grader, into a little bit more independence because I am bringing on twin kindergartners into our homeschool this year. So it would be nice for him to kind of be able to take something more himself. And I think this would be the subject that he does that. But obviously I'm not gonna just check out. I'll be checking in on him and stuff too. And this past year, I did have him doing some supplemental math worksheets through Abeka. That's not my current plan for next year. I'm holding that loosely. It really depends on how much of this program includes math back to review as well as mental math and things and i've heard it's quite robust and so that's my hopes that's my hopes that this will be just what i need so the last thing i want to talk about is kind of enrichment for my son in particular now i did talk about in my third grade recap video which i'll link or i'll link all these videos down below because i think i have too many to link above but 
I'm just not trying to add extra stuff. I'm not adding art or handicraft or anything because my kids all go to an enrichment school one day a week. It is like a drop off, six hours a day. They pick their classes, have teachers and classmates. It's fantastic. They love it. And here's a list of the classes he's taking next fall. So he is taking technical theater. He's taking Lego Story Creators, Scratch Lab. He's been really into coding lately. He's doing Taekwondo. He's taking a filmmaker's class and a strategy game class. And so it's like this game class where they learn how to play board games in strategic ways. It sounds fantastic. I wish I could take that class. So he's doing that. He's also doing piano lessons with his grandma, which is fantastic. And so we're not adding anything else. That's it. We're just doing these language arts subjects, this math subject, as well as his enrichment class. And he will have a very well-rounded fourth grade year. I'm very hopeful for all of this stuff. I'm very excited for him. Let me know down below if you have a fourth grader, if you have any tips for me as I'm kind of moving him a little bit more independently. But otherwise, you guys, that's what I have for this video. The next video coming up either tomorrow or Thursday will be my third graders curriculum choices. So subscribe to the channel if you want to make sure you catch that video. But otherwise, you know, thumbs up, all the things, and I will see you in the next homeschool video. All right, guys, take care.